Hello guys, good morning. How are you guys doing? I hope everyone is fine. So there is this story that I want to share with you guys and uh, I want you guys to listen very carefully and also share your thoughts with me in the comment section. You know, sometimes life can be very, very difficult. So much so that people are determined to take what ever means necessary to better up their lives. People are willing to risk whatever it takes to better up their lives. And most of the times, you see these kind of things with Africans. They do not care how difficult or how dangerous the road to Europe is. They do not care what they will go to do there. They do not care how they are going to get there. They just want to get there. The only thing they know is they want to get there. So let me share this story with you that I found on Facebook and uh, share your thoughts with us in the comment section. So this was uh, someone's personal experiences that he shared on a Facebook group. So let me read to you what he wrote. The hell of a clandestine migrant adventure wrote. That is the title of this um, story or this article. We left Cameroon in 2016. I was living in Douala and I was selling clothes in Bobby Market. But life was getting harder and harder. Despite having masters in economics, I couldn't find a job. I found myself forced to sell clothes in Bopi so I can join the two ends every month. With my sick mom, newborn daughter, and bills piling up, I couldn't resist when a former classmate from Yaoundé suggested going on an adventure. He had an itinerary with him and he had hinerary. I would like to know myself and I said yes. So it's September 7, 2016 that we left. I wake up in the morning and hug my newborn baby girl. Tell my wife I go market. <laughs> uh, let's continue. Tell my wife I go market and gave her one million to keep for me. She was legit to think I saw my clothes counter for two million and went on the adventure with half. This morning, we had to meet at Bonaberry. That's where our guard was. I arrived at Bonaberry. There were several young people from all over Cameroon and even from neighboring countries, Gabon, Chad, Central African Republic. All went on adventures too. We boarded this bus and left Cameroon via Northwest to Nigeria. There we met another passerby who was supposed to help us get to Niger. Arriving at Niger, we had to find a way through the desert to get to either Morocco or Tunisia. But it's Niger that thing got complicated. The passenger failed to honor his appointment, yet he had already been paid. A week later, the passerby still wasn't there. We had to find another passerby. So we left Niger one night, arrived in the middle of the desert. Passersby stopped to search for us and took everything. If you resisted, they threatened to abandon you in the middle of desert. Girls being raped in front of us and there was nothing we could do to help them. We were abandoned in the desert by passerby and we had to continue on food. So I, I, I think that what he meant by passerby are like the people who were supposed to guide them to the desert. That is what he meant by passerby. They are like, uh, you can call them um, human traffickers, right? You can call them that. 
That's what he meant by passerby. Nothing else to see but sand. No, one, no water, no food for days. It was either you do or die. The strongest continued to uh, Libyan border. The weakest left their lives in the Sahara. It's, that is quite tragic, right? Um, this is one of the most dangerous journey anyone can ever take. Uh, if you are from West Africa, uh, you, you must have heard of many such stories like this. Um, people endangering their lives just so they can get to the other side. And sometimes I believe it's really not that necessary. Like I said in my previous video, uh, going abroad is to better up your lives and that of your family. But it's not worth the weeks, okay? If your family can put together some money and get you abroad in the right way or through the right way uh, without endangering your lives, that, will, that is more better or that is more advisable. But for you to take this very, very dangerous road just so you can get to whatever, wherever you think you are going, it's really not worth it. So people must learn or must understand that their lives are far more important than the journey or the adventure or the Europe that they want to go. We must all understand this. So let me continue. So here we were in Libya, nothing in our pockets, homeless, we didn't know anyone. Luckily, I gave my wife one million to keep, so I called her that day to send me 500,000. Only then she knew I have gone on an adventure. We didn't cause in very long, because while we were on the phone, the Libyan police spotted us. Instead of putting us in a cell or repatriating us, they brought us to a black migrant market where we were sold. What's an amazing this was, it was legal in Libya. So I was bought by a rich Libyan Arab who beat me daily, put me through hell, torturing me daily, enjoyed it, and even the police approved it. For two years, I went through weeping, matched, piercing. I was traumatized. Two years later, while the man was on a business trip with his wife, the maid was in the market. I was free by a 12-year-old girl. She also stole her father's money to allow me to flee far away. Instead of going back to Cameroon, Despite all I endure, I chose to use the opportunity to go to Morocco. Finally, I arrived in Morocco after two years of adventure. There remained one last step to cross, cross to Mediterranean. After two failed attempts, ran out of money, had to work to make my third attempt, had to work for one year, Towards the end of 2019, I made my third attempt in an inflatable canoe reserved for 40 people. There were over 200 of us in the middle of the ocean. You could see the Italian coast in the distance. While the NGOs were heading towards us to save us, the Italian police were doing everything they could to chase us down. So we crossed over and we were taken over by NGOs, finally in Europe. We were in a migrant detention center where I spent a year before I could escape and finally arrived in Paris. In 2020, finally arrived in Paris. No house, no food, no money, no phone, actually nothing but my Backpack. I left 2016 
2020 was four years away from my daughter, my wife, my mom. In four years, my clothing business would have evolved. I could have opened a clothing store. Luckily, I found a Cameroonian in Paris who let me work in his restaurant for some change. Some Ken Julio, I will never forget you. But honestly, going on an adventure is the worst thing I have done in my life. I have seen friends die in front of me. I have seen sisters get raped to death in front of me. I have seen death in front of my eyes. Thankfully, God was dead. I'm back in Douala, close to my wife and my daughter. Passing on my clothing business, and my wife has her restaurant, and she is expecting a second baby. You guys have heard what this uh, person has written. He has recounted his journey through the Sahara Desert from Cameroon all the way to Libya, to Morocco, and to Italy, right? And you see this happen most of the times. Like I mentioned before, if you are from West Africa, from Cameroon, Gabon, Chad, Nigeria, Ghana, they use this route to Libya all the time. And believe me, it is really, really dangerous. I wouldn't advise anybody to endanger themselves just so they can get to Italy or to France or wherever they think they are going. Because the risks you are taking is not worth it. So let no one fool you or let no one confuse you by just telling you that as soon as you cross to the other side, everything gets better, right? No one should fool you. It's a very, very difficult thing. And uh, it takes a lot of effort for you to really, really be successful at it. But to you guys out there, do you know of any person who has used this route and has successfully made it to the other side? Let us know in the comment section. We like hearing what you have to say. And if you came across any story on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitter, on Instagram, or even on TikTok, that you would like us to talk on this show, or that you think is worth sharing on this show, please send it our way through any of our social media platforms. You can find them on this channel description section. So thank you very much for watching this video. And like always, see you in the next one. Goodbye.